Hi, I'm Camille with On William Street, and this week we're going to talk about a bunch of different ways you can quilt a log cabin quilt block. So this is our quilt block for the month two of our online quilting bee that we are hosting all year long. So if you would like to have instructions on how to actually make this block and see all the other fun blocks we're making this year, check out our um, video from a couple weeks ago. But this week what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of the different ways that you can quilt this block and give you some different ideas and different ways that you can break it down so that when we're all done with these quilts, um, with these blocks, you'll be able to put the whole quilt top together and get it all quilted so that you can actually use it. With a log cabin block, one of the easiest ways to quilt it is simply to go ahead and quilt each of the different sections. And this is fun if you have a lot of um, border type ideas that you really like to use. You can use basically anything that works well in a border is going to work well in one of those strips. So with this, I like to go ahead and alternate different designs. You can do a couple of them and just alternate back and forth. You can do something different in each one. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Mix it up you know, or, or do things a little more simple. I did to go ahead and decide on this. I'm going to put the same in all of the little four corners. Now it's just going to kind of give, bring it together and give a little bit of cohesion. But on, oh, just ignore those. On the opposite corners, I am going to do something different. And that's just going to make it stand out a little bit more. So I did alternate the quilting designs and did something different on the ones with the teal around the outside as opposed to the ones with the gray. One thing to keep in mind when you do it like this is it can get very busy very quickly. So because of this, I opted to keep the background pretty simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and put in some straight lines. And that's going to draw all of your attention to that log cabin block without things being overly crazy um, busy. It's going to draw the focus there. It's not going to be competing for the background elements and what's inside of the block itself. So that's the first idea on what we can do with a log cabin block. Now the next idea that I have is to treat the whole, all of the log cabin blocks as one element and to fill them all completely. So on this one, I went ahead and did just a great big feather and filled in every single one of the, all of the space of the log cabins as if it was one unique element as opposed to doing them individually. And then in the outside, again, found something that would just kind of frame that out and draw your attention to the main motif inside of the log cabin block. And I did that with these diagonal lines that's just going to draw in everything and just like to so give it a nice frame. So now on this last one, I wanted to kind of find a different way, break down the shapes in a different way. And I actually kind of saw them all as one shape. So if you see, I see the yellow as a very, as a shape in the background. So I did, went the, did the lines that connected it all together. And then the same thing with the light teal. I saw that all as one shape. And I like to throw in some unexpected shapes here and there. So that's why I added this square or diamond in the middle and frame that out first and then just filled in around it. And that's just going to add a little bit of an extra pop as we're working into that inside element. And as you can see, that really makes that cross across the center of those log cabins stand out. So again, I quilted it all as if it was one element and I'm going to go ahead and put in these diagonal lines that kind of echo that center cross. So that's one other way that you can go in and break down those shapes. Of course, we still have to fill in the background. And because of how much quilting is going on inside that log cabin, I am doing the same thing where I'm kind of echoing around it and keeping the background a little more simple just so that it is, doesn't overpower the quilt. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some pebbles after I echo that so that uh, it kind of add, like gets, adds some, some repetition, connects all of the elements together. You'll also notice I went ahead and did two lines when I echoed it. And anytime I'm echoing something, I like to use two lines and leave a space just because it's going to really make it stand out more. If I'd only done the one line, it would have blended into the pebbles too much and it wouldn't have really stood out. All right, so go ahead and take the image in our blog post and you can print that out. It's gonna be the blank block and you can go ahead and print that out and you can start doodling and sketching and just have some fun with the blog, put some of these different quilt ideas, quilting ideas um, to practice, see what you like, see what you can come up with. And then, like we said last month, go ahead and take those sketches and don't throw them away, stash them away with your blocks. So that at the end, you'll have everything all planned out and lots of fun ideas to put the whole quilt together and finish off the quilting with that. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us and let us know. And as always, um, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell so that you get notified when we have new videos each week. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want, um, 
uh, notifications in your email to remind you when each of these blocks post, head to our website and sign up for our newsletter and we will send out, we send out weekly emails whenever we post a video so that you won't miss anything. And we will see you next week.